Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk to you about how you can calculate the holding period return on a bond. In a previous video I've talked to you about how you can calculate the holding period return on a stock investment. This one is on bonds, but the idea is essentially the same. When you buy a bond and then you decide to sell it, then your holding period is basically, well, the time that you held on to that bond from the time you bought it till the time you sold it. And therefore your holding period return is basically the return that you made during your holding period. It's really that simple. Now, one point that I want to emphasize is that the holding period return on a bond may not, in fact, often is not equal to the yield to maturity on a bond. The yield to maturity on the bond is the rate of return that you would make on a bond if you bought it and then held on to it till the time it matures. If the bond is maturing in 10 years or 15 years or five years, if you hold on to the bond till the time it matures, then yes, the return that you would make will be equal to the yield to maturity. But if you decide to sell it before it matures, then your holding period return may be higher or lower than the yield to maturity on the bond. And this is something that I want to show you using an example as well. So here we go. So suppose one year ago you bought a corporate bond for a thousand twenty seven point five zero. OK, quick pause here to do a concept check. The par value of a bond is typically one thousand dollars. If you got one for a thousand twenty seven, what does that mean? that the yield to maturity on the bond at the time you bought it was less than the coupon rate that the bond was offering. Basically, the bond was offering you something more, but you required less, which was your yield to maturity. And therefore, the price that you were willing to pay was more than the face value or the par value of the bond. OK, so that is a side note. Now, the bond has a 5.8 percent coupon paid annually. This is unusual, but in this question, we're assuming that again, if the coupon is 5.8 percent, this means that at the time that you bought it, the yield to maturity was correct, less than 5.8 percent. Now, the bond today is set to mature in six years. This means that one year ago when you bought it, how many years did you have till it matured? Exactly, seven years. All right, so now suppose you decide to sell your bond today, okay? This means that you only held on to it for one year and your required rate of return on the bonds is 5.4%. This is the yield to maturity that exists today. We don't know what the yield to maturity was last year when you bought it, but we do know that today it is 5.4%. Now, again, you must be clear that the yield to maturity implies something about prices. And so we will need to figure out that if you decide to sell the bond today, what is the price at which you'll be selling it, which we can actually calculate based on this yield to maturity figure that we are told. The question is, what would be your total rate of return on the investment? Because our holding period is one year, this question is essentially asking us, what would be your one year holding period return? So what I've done here is that I've translated all the information that was given to us in these cells. The coupon rate of the bond is 5.80%. The rate of return or the yield to maturity that is required today is 5.40%. But one year ago when you bought it, it may have been different. In fact, I'm gonna show you how you could calculate that. The inflation rate is 2.90%. The face value of the bond is 1000. Now what I've done is that I've made a timeline. If you look at the question, it says that today the bond has six years left to mature. So today I'm representing with time period one. Now typically we represent today by time period zero, but I'm not doing that because technically you bought the bond last year. Last year, you bought it for 1,027.50. This was given to you. At that time, the bond had seven years to mature. So let's go back one year. You were looking at an annual payment of 5.80% times the $1,000 face value. I'm going to lock these with the F4T, lock this with the F4T as well, because this is a constant. 
So $58, these payments are annual. It is mentioned in the question. And so I just control V this. In the very last year, I was gonna get not just 58, but also the face value. So all that I'm gonna do is basically do equal to this plus the face value of the bond, which is 1,058 total. Now, the price that you paid last year, that is the present value of all the cash flows that you were expecting at that time. And so at that time, the yield to maturity would simply be equal to the rate of return that you would have earned based on the number of time periods, which in this case is seven. The payment that you were going to receive, which was basically 58. The present value, I'm going to denote this with a negative sign, is 1027.50. And then in the future, you were going to get this face value of the bond one payment of $1,000 as well. And so the rate on this is 5.3. 32%. This is the yield to maturity that was prevailing at that time, okay? And so as I told you, no surprises that the yield to maturity is less than the coupon rate of 5.80%. Now, when one year goes by, you receive this $158 payment, that's fine, but then you decide to sell the bond at this time period, time period one. The question is, what is the price at which you would be selling it? Well, the price here has to be equal to the present value of the cash flows that you're going to receive. The cash flows are this 58, 58, 58, and then 1,058 at the very end. The question is, what is the rate of return that you would require? That is actually given to you. That yield went up to 5.40%. What does that mean? You may recall that as yield to maturity goes up, prices go down. In this case, that is exactly what is happening. You should expect that the price at which you'll be selling it after one year will be less than 1,027.50. Why? Because when you bought the bond, the yield to maturity at that time, you just calculated it, that's 5.32%. But over the one year time period, the yield went up, which means the prices would have gone down. And you can actually calculate this. So the rate of return is your required rate of return of 5.40%. The number of time periods now is six, right? Because there are six years remaining. The payment that you're receiving is this 58. You're gonna receive this for six years. And in the end, you're gonna receive uh, $1,000, uh, $1,000, which is the face value. When I do this, 1020.50, I am just gonna go here and make sure that I uh, enter this as a negative of this number so that I get a positive number. And so now if somebody asks you, what is the holding period return or how much return did you make in this one year? Then you basically say, well, after one year, I got two things. First, I got this $58 coupon payment and then I made a loss on my sale. I basically sold the bond for 1020.05 when initially I had bought it for 1027.5 and all of this is the dollar amount of return that I made on my initial 1027.50 dollars worth of investment. If you do this calculation, you get about 4.9%. Let me just round it off. So about 4.92%. This is your holding period return. And what you may notice, and this is the important part, is that this number is not equal to the yield to maturity that prevails on the bond at this time. And it is also not equal to the yield to maturity that you bought this for initially at time period zero. And that is because you're not holding on to this bond till the time it matures, you're deciding to sell it. Unfortunately for you, after one year, the prices of bonds have fallen because yield to maturity has risen. And so that is why you're making less than the 5.32% that you would have otherwise if you held on to this bond for the total duration of the seven years that remained at the time that you bought it. And so this is the idea behind holding period returns. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.